Hi y'all, Matthew chapter 26 verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and said unto Peter, What, could you not check? watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I'm going to stop there for now. The title of this message is, Could You Not Tarry One Hour? Father, I come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus, Lord. Father, I ask that you anoint me to preach. Anoint them to hear, Lord. Anoint them to understand, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The time of our text, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, and Judas had just betrayed him. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and they went a little bit further in the garden. And he told the, those three men, he said, y'all sit and watch. And I'm going to go pray. Terry here, and I'm watch, and I'm going to go pray. And he went a total of three times. And the third time he comes back to them, and they're all asleep. And he asked Peter, could you not tarry with me one hour? Could you not watch with me one hour? This is hours before the crucifixion, y'all. Hours. He was fixing to be arrested and they were fixing to have the trial the whole nine yards. This was hours before the cross. And he was sorrowful not because it was because of the death, but I think more so it was the fact that he was going to be separated from his father for three and a half hours. And so he takes Peter, James, and John to the garden and he goes and he prays and he says, Father, if it be I, thy will, let this cup pass from me. And the Bible says he was sorrowful and in anguish to the point he sweat drops of blood. And the disciples, Peter, James, and John, couldn't even tarry with him. They ended up falling asleep. And he comes and he asks Peter, could you not tarry with me one hour? Y'all, it's the same way with us. Can we not tarry with him one hour? Can we not tarry with our Father for one hour? He wants us to know him. He wants to know us. He already knows us, but he wants to know us from our point of view. He desires relationship. And it's, it's not easy to set aside the time to pray and to get before him. Galatians 6, 7 says, what we show, sow, we reap. What are we sowing into? Are we sowing into the kingdom? Or are we sowing into the world? Like I said, y'all, he desires to know us. He desires that we learn of him. He desires that we can get alone with him and just be still. And, and there, look, y'all, there's 24 hours in a day. And we can't even give him an hour. 
and y'all, this is hard for me too. I have yet to get to the point on a daily basis where I'll spend an hour with him. My usual is about 30 minutes. But any time alone with the Father is beneficial. I don't care whether it's five minutes. I don't care whether it's an hour. It's beneficial to to us to get before him. So we we have all this stuff going on around us and we think we're too busy to get before him. And he comes back to Peter and he's half asleep and the Lord says, Could you not tarry with me one hour? Could you not watch with me one hour? And his statement after that is revealing. He says, Pray and seek that you fall not into temptation. When, when we get started on this process of seeking him, the flesh doesn't want to doesn't want to seek him. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's what he told his disciples. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh does not want to seek him. So we have to develop our inner spirit man to be able to seek him and to develop the relationship that he desires. He desires to know us on an intimate level. He desires that we know him on an intimate level. And the only way we can know him on an intimate level is to seek his face and get in this book. We have got to get in this book. But we're too busy. We don't want to take the time to shut everything off and get still. So oftentimes, we get so busy and then something comes up and we're like, Lord, what's going on? When the reality of it was, had we been seeking his face, he might have told us what was going to happen. We want revival. We want this move of God. But we can't even tarry with him an hour. We can't even tarry with him 30 minutes. And y'all, I'm not criticizing anybody. That's not the point of this. Because I'm not even up to that hour level yet. The point is that we set aside some sort of time throughout our day to get before him. How much stuff can be prevented that we find ourselves in if we get before him? When we start communing with him, when we start learning that still small voice, because it's in the stillness that he can speak. He can't speak with us doing 40,000 other things. We have to set the time to get still and get before him. Then when we start developing that prayer life and the Bible study, that voice becomes clearer. Because we are taking the time to develop, to learn, to listen to that voice. He, 
he is the creator of everything, y'all. And yet, he sent his son to die on a cross to restore relationship. And yet, we're not taking advantage of what the cross paid for. The cross paid for relationship. The cross paid for us to be able to come to him. Paul said, come boldly into the throne room of grace. We have access to the very throne room of God. Are we taking advantage of it? He desires all of us. He doesn't want just bits and pieces. He doesn't want us just on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night at church. He wants us 24 hours a day. When we first start off this getting before him and studying and learning him, the flesh is not going to like it. Because he, oftentimes, he's not going to show up right away. But if we will take the time and develop the prayer life of 15, 20 minutes a day, and y'all look, 15 to 20 minutes a day is not a legalistic do how many ever minutes you can do. But do it with a sincere heart that says, Lord, everything's turned off and I am right here. And I'm not getting up until I hear from you. And the more we do this, the more intimate he becomes. And y'all, <laughs> this is where I'm at. When we learn that still small voice, it's addicting. We want to hear it more and more and more. So we will take more time to get before him. We will take more time to allow him to have his way. Like I say, y'all, turn on worship in the background. Turn it down real, real low, but have something on in the background so you can stay kind of focused. Leave the phone, leave the computer, leave everything in a whole other room. That way you have no distractions and get before your father and watch him begin to move. The whole, he did not send his son to die just for sin. And a lot of y'all are going to balk at that and say, excuse me, what? He died, yes, for sin, but more so to restore us to proper relationship with the Father. Because that's the Father's heart. He wants relationship with every single human being on this planet. Okay, y'all look at it like this. He died... For the world. There is some 7.5 billion people on this planet. The majority of them. Will never come to Christ. That's just the way it is. Um, 
but he died to have to give that person the opportunity to come to him to restore the relationship it's like elijah when he was running from jezebel and the lord appeared unto him in the fire and in the earthquake and yet the bible says he was in neither he was in the steel small voice how many times do we hear that still small voice and ignore it see the more we develop this that still small voice gets louder and louder and louder and louder But we have to develop it. It's not just going to. He wants. And it's it's crazy, but he wants to know about our days, y'all. He wants to know everything there is to know, even though he already knows it. He gave me, I guess it was three or four years ago, right after I started feeling the call to preach heavily, um, he started dealing with me on the relationship side of our relationship. And he said, JB, look at it this way. A husband and wife can't survive if they don't talk and i said yeah okay he said it's the same way with us a relationship cannot survive if there's no dialogue notice i said dialogue this is not prayer go up nothing come down he desires to speak to his children. And once again, y'all, it takes time to develop it. It's not just going to and be here. It takes us time to develop to learn that still small voice. And he comes in and he asks Peter, could you not tarry with me one hour? There is a book that I am seriously thinking about getting called, Could You Not Tarry One Hour by Larry Lee. For whatever reason, the Lord's been dealing with me for, well, the better part of a month. On prayer and it's not so much ministry based it's relationship based y'all he wants to know us he wants to know us on a level like I said yes he knows all about us but he wants to hear our voices he wants to know what our thoughts are verbally okay but he also desires that we develop our spirit man enough to learn that still small voice to where it doesn't have to be a boom it doesn't have to be a, a let there be light moment you know he wants us to develop it to where even if it's a whisper. And it's going to take time to, to, to develop it. It's not just going to. But if we will develop it. There's no telling what he will do. 
The Bible says, Whatsoever I tell you in the prayer closet, speak openly on the rooftops. Y'all, once again, this is the creator of the universe that knows every hair on our heads, that wants a personal relationship with us. Okay, he wants to be so personal with us that because the fact is he's got a whole plan that is individually planned for every single human being. How can we know that plan if we're not seeking his face? We can't. That's why I'm imploring y'all. Could you not tarry with me one hour? Okay, let me rephrase that. Could you not tarry with me five minutes? Because he, the reality of it is, he can reveal more to our hearts in five minutes than we would ever dream. But it, he's not going to force it. We have got to develop the prayer life for him to be able to speak. And this whole thing of, oh, he doesn't speak today. <laughs> the Bible, Christ said that his sheep know his voice. Which means he still speaks. And he has an individual plan, an individual path and direct steps he wants every single person to follow. But we cannot do that if we are not in relationship. He comes and he asks Peter. All the disciples were asleep. And he comes and he asks Peter, Could you not watch with me one hour? He told the disciples, Terry here and I'm going to go pray. But watch. Watch with me. <laughs> Can you not tarry with him? Could you not take the time to sow into your relationship with the Lord? We sow into all this stuff. We sow into the world, but yet we're not sowing into the Lord. We're not sowing and getting still and learning of Him and learning that still small voice because that still small voice keeps us out of trouble if we're close enough to it to hear it and obey it Terry Terry with him I don't care like I said y'all start off five ten minutes a day Set aside a time during the day. I don't care if it's on your lunch break. I don't care if it's at night before bed or first thing in the morning. Whenever you have time, set aside five minutes to study his word and to seek his face. And if we will do it with a sincere heart, that five minutes will grow into 10 and 30 and an hour. And sometimes more than an hour. See, because when we get this, when we start learning and, and discerning that still small voice, we get to where we can't have enough. We want it more and more and more. And he will give it more and more and more. Okay? 
It's like Ezekiel, when he gave Ezekiel the vision with the man and the line in his hand. And he was out in the river, and the river come up to his ankles. And the further he went out, it come up to his loins. And the further he went out, it come up to his shoulders. And eventually he began to swim. He has more for us than we could even dream. He wants to intimately be involved. He desires to speak to us. And it's going to take setting aside time to do it and getting in his word. Because if you don't know his word, if we don't know his word, he can't speak. He's not going to violate his word. Not going to do it. He wants to know us. He wants to know, and y'all, this is going to sound weird. He wants to know our plans. There's an old saying that says, tell God your plans and you'll hear him laugh. There's a part of me that agrees with that, and there's a part of me that doesn't agree with that at all. Because if we're in proper relationship, his plans become ours. He'll start revealing things that he wants us to walk out. Whether it's whatever the case. And he'll start slowly. Because this is not going to be just a and be have the whole picture. He'll give us step by step directions. That is why relationship and tarrying with him is so important. And if we will cultivate the prayer life and the Bible study, it will grow into what he desires. Because y'all, let me tell you something. I went from seeking his face first thing in the morning and studying first thing in the morning to the last, I guess it's been two weeks, having two a day. I'll study and pray in the morning, and then right before, about an hour before bed, I'll go and I'll have my alone time again. His voice has become that much stronger because I'm taking the time to develop it. I'm taking the time to set aside time to get still and before him. Because I've got to have the direction for not only personally, but the church. But it's more so about relationship. He desires relationship first and foremost. Most. If we let's say, because he gave us the illustration several times in scripture of the bride and the bridegroom, if you're married and you don't have communication, what happens? Relationship falls apart. It's the same way with us and our Lord, dude. Y'all. We, we, we've got to develop it. And like I said, it's not going to come overnight. He's not, he's not going to just us pray and all of a sudden his voice, boom. That's not... <laughs> It's a still, small voice. 
and it has to be cultivated so we can hear it. And once again, y'all, Bible study is paramount here because he's not going to violate his word. Could you not tarry one hour? Could you not tarry five minutes? I wonder how much, and I'm through, I'm done. I wonder how much we miss by not getting before him. Myself included. I wonder how much, because y'all got to remember, this is a God that knows everything. Past, present, future. And if that is the case, and it is, then he knows exactly what path we need to take. And if we're not getting before him and seeking him, we lose that path. We won't, we won't know which direction to go. Seek him. Get before him. Could you not tarry one hour? Like I said, y'all, the flesh is going to fight this. Because the flesh don't want you to get before God. The flesh is going to be like, nope. I got too much other stuff to do. But if we will take the time to get before him. There's no telling what he will do. There's no telling. But we have to get before him. He is the creator of everything, and yet the blood of his son paid for us to have relationship. He desires relationship. He desires us to come before him and learn, as Mary did, to sit at his feet. See, there's an old saying that says Revel desperation precedes revelation. We ha oftentimes have to get desperate before we get still. We have to get desperate before we'll go to him and get before him and sit there. Like I said, y'all, turn on some sort of worship in the background and get in his word and ask him to speak. Ask him to cultivate that still, small voice. And watch him go to work. But it's going to be a daily process. It's going to be a a daily, this is a daily walk. It's not just a, oh, whenever I feel like a thing. It's a daily walk. How much, like I said, how much do we miss? Because we don't get before him. How much does he want to do? How much does he want to reveal to us? That we miss because we're not getting before him.
this sermon's a challenge to me too, y'all. Because yeah, I can tarry with him in the morning and I can tarry with him before bed. But there are there are 24 hours in a day. And we say we're too busy to get before him. I get it. A lot of us have kids. A lot of us have families. And we can't get before him. If we have to. Go to bed early. And get up early. Set an alarm. Get up early. And before everybody gets up. Have your alone time with the Father. And watch your relationship with Him explode. Y'all, I am walking this out as we speak. I have seen my relationship with Him the last two weeks be transformed. Because I was praying and seeking him first thing in the morning. And he started dealing with me. JB started seeking me twice a day. Once in the morning and once before you let a little bit in and go to bed. I said, okay. And y'all, I can seek him in the morning all day long. That didn't bug me because I don't have no distractions. Seeking him before bed is a whole nother battle. Because by that time, I'm ready to go to bed, I'm wore out. But y'all, I'm telling you, the last two weeks, my relationship with the Lord, it's unbelievable. And here's another thought, y'all. I'm going to tie all this together. If the cross paid for our relationship, which it did, you go back and you study the book of Acts. You go back and you study Azusa Street. You go back and you study all these revivals. What do they all have in common? They started with a group of people that would not stop seeking his face. You go back and you study the Azusa Street Revival. And history says, and I've got writings to prove it, that he... Charles Parham was a teacher in Kansas City. And he told his students over Christmas break. He said, I want y'all to study the book of Acts. And I want y'all to pray. And seek his face. And ask him if this is for today or not. January the 1st, 1900. At exactly 12 a.m., the Holy Ghost fell and ushered in modern day Pentecost. What would have happened had them students went home? What would have happened had them students said, No, I don't want it? It's just like the book of Acts. How did the church start? The church started with people seeking his face. They didn't know for what. But he said, Terry, in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. There's that word, Terry, again. See, tarrying is waiting and being still. 
Habakkuk says, Though it tarry, wait for it. Y'all, it takes time. This is not going to develop overnight. It's not going to do it. And the devil will fight, and the devil will claw, and the devil will do it, whatever he can in his power to get us discouraged to not pray. He don't want to pray because he knows if the Lord can get a bunch of people on their faces and seeking his face. <laughs> There's no telling what will happen. Could you not tarry? Christ said, "Could you not tarry one hour?" I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the hour off. Could you not tarry? And use whatever time limit you want to put on it. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that a step further. Don't put a time limit on it at all. Get before him and let him have his way. Because y'all, when we learn to get in his presence, we'll get to the point, and I'm at this point now, I don't want to leave that presence. I want to stay in that presence as long as humanly possible. And it's inevitable. The phone will ring. Something will happen. But take advantage of the stillness that you've got while you've got it and seek him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be added unto you. Seek him for him. Seek him for relationship. Because the cross paid for it. Like I said, Paul said in Galatians 6, 7, what we reap, we sow, or what we sow, we reap. Are we sowing into the kingdom? Are we sowing into relationship with him? Or are we sowing into the world? Choice is ours. But I'm telling you, if you're hungry for God, Start seeking him. Because y'all, we don't have time. I believe he is going to give us one last revival and then he will call us home. And if we are not in relationship with him with our faith anchored in Christ and what he did at the cross when this revival comes we won't know how to handle it could you not tarry with me one hour Father, I come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus, Lord. Father, thank you for allowing me to preach, Lord. Give them a hunger for you to seek your face, to give before you. Even if it's just five or ten minutes, Lord, give them the hunger to get before you. Because when we get before you, you will grow that time. Father, I ask that you continue to move, that you give us the hunger to get before you. 
and to not stop, even when the devil comes in, that we don't stop, that we press, that we press through all the stuff and get before you like the woman that touched the hem of your garment. That said, I don't care what everybody, I've got to get to Jesus. Lord, let that be our mindset. I've got to get to Jesus, whatever it takes. Father, I ask that you continue to move. That you draw, that you give us a fire, that you give us a hunger for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I will see y'all next week.